Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and conclude the SSF series for the Righteous Fire Inquisitor for 3.17. I had a lot of fun. I did not achieve all of my goals, but I achieved all of the realistic ones for me. Um, that if I were to replay this character again in a league, I could basically go like, oh, okay. I remember how hard it was to acquire some of those things. So like one of them would be the Armor ES six link chest, um, acquiring a Death's Rush. Although this was hard to get, I've found many of them. So I'm not really too concerned. The Legacy of Fury, which is basically from uh, Maven. Uh, and then other than that, everything is achievable. The weapon is deterministically crafted. Uh, the helmet was not really that hard to hit, and I still have an extra 16 essences of horror, so definitely acquirable. Rise of the Phoenix can be target farm, but you don't even really have to use this chest or this uh, shield. You could literally go with like a tier one life regen, thick life roll with no max res, and you would still be fine. Uh, obviously, you know, I would like to get a better one. Um, ended up crafting a pretty good damage ring over here. The only things that I did not do that I wanted to do still would be like, number one, clear the feared. I could still clear the feared. The problem with the feared is, where the hell is it? Here we go. It's just annoying to get it set up because I have to get like Chalupa and I can absolutely clear the feared. Like I have no doubt in my mind, there's like zero chance. Most of the reason you're not going to clear the feared is user error, not necessarily build error. This character has like so much more damage than my trade league character because I spent some time really min-maxing it and crafting it. Um, and then the last thing would be a proper max res shield that I was talking about. Uh, I never really ended up doing that. I kind of got burnt out of expedition. Didn't really feel like pushing it further. So without further ado, I'm just going to go jump in a T16 map. I guess I did show you guys a guardian clear before, so I'll just do another guardian clear. Where is, uh, let's see. Here. Like a minotaur. What's this have? 98% extra cold with a ghost. You know, uh, it's not really very smart, but let's go ahead and do it. I'll tell you what, since we're going to do that, we're going to cheat and we're going to run a Sulfite Scarab here because we're giving bosses extra damage and there's going to be two bosses, potentially even ghosted. So what that Sulfite Scarab does is it's basically going to give us Sulfite Infusion via Pact with Energy. So um, I would say the biggest... The biggest thing I could take from this character is realizing how good Master of Fire is. Um, so a lot of people always ask me a very common question about Righteous Fire, which is, hey man, should I get, uh, should I still go for Master of Fire if I have exposure on my gloves? And my answer pretty much never changed, but after playing in an SSF environment without Master of Fire, I can tell you without a doubt, when you're doing things like say Legion, Master of Fire is so valuable to have that permanent exposure on all of the rare mobs you are running by. It is a very big difference. You're not going to be frost blinking every target. You don't have time to throw a fire trap at every single rare mob. That's like not really a thing, right? So, uh, so some big information I got to take back from this was basically if your goal is clear speed, you're always going to want to go with Master of Fire. Just nothing really comes close to that exposure in terms of how you apply it. If you're going for like a bossing build, then Master of Fire is not really needed. You can get a higher source of exposure on your gloves, specifically for bossing. Oh, I don't have Enduring Cry. I actually fucked this up. I'm supposed to have Enduring Cry right now. That's all right. Growing. Let's just move a little. Oh, I fucked up, actually. I thought I had the... Uh, that's right, I respect the bossing atlas, so I don't actually have Guardian's Aid. But anyway, there you go. There's a Minotaur kill, so... Very impressed with the character's damage. Very impressed with the character's survivability. Uh, you know, I did not actually raid Righteous Fire very good for SSF for a long time because I just wasn't really playing SSF, and I didn't want to recommend something with certainty, knowing that I have not played it, and it might not be as good as, um, you know, as I thought it is so much better than i thought um just to highlight some things again highest path from inquisitor gives you the ability to run rf without any need for any form of gearing right you come with near curse immunity your elemental res is very high in general because you have purity of elements and you're in the templar section what i mean by that is like gearing up for elemental res is literally not a problem so even if you're brand new you get so much res 
Determination gives you a massive bulk of armor. Um, you get two sources of critical strike damage reduction with my tree. You get like the armor mastery and you get uh, Sanctum of Thought. Um, just in general, I was very impressed with this character's progression in SSF. I would definitely recommend it 10 out of 10 and I'll probably play it again. The biggest chase item for this build, there's two. For single target damage, it was definitely getting an Ashes of the Star, Anointing Charisma, and Fitting in Skitterbot. Insane damage. It was probably like a 30% multiplier overall uh, to my Fire Traps damage. And then the second one would be Legacy of Fury for the clear. And not only the clear, but also because of the Scorch on enemies. The Scorch adds such a big uh, damage boost for things like Guardians. So overall, you know, very, very happy with the character. Um, I'm sad the video series is going to come to an end, but I'm just a bit burnt out. You know, I don't really feel like grinding for a Timeless Jewel here or grinding to do the Feared. I kind of, you know, those are like kind of some fluff stuff that if I was enjoying it more, I would play. Uh, but, you know, that motivation of waking up at 2 o'clock in the morning to want to play this character has kind of poofed. It's gone. You know, I guess that's what happens when you have a 98 Righteous Fire Inquisitor and then four level 100s that are all Righteous Fire. But I got to say, I'm not burnt out of RF. I've just played it a lot right now, and I don't really want to play other skills. I don't know. They just don't really give me the satisfaction. I, I tried theory crafting a little bit today on stream, and it just wasn't really the same. I think I'm a little bit done with PoE for this season. That doesn't mean I'm not going to be back, though. I'm very excited for what next league is going to offer. Mainly, I'm really excited to see what they're going to nerf, because we've had two patches of straight buffing. I'm really curious to see what's going to get nerfed in the end. Uh, I also do want to bring up my goals page to just talk about a few things on here. Sorry for the flashbang. Um, so yeah, so basically, Kill Squidward was uh, what is it, Eater of Worlds, Searing Exarch, Maven, Uber Adziri would not be a problem, Awakener was a joke, Uber Elder was a complete joke, I did him, Maven witnessed accidentally, uh, was completely deathless, the four Watchstones came with all of that, Featured Cloister was multi-mod for... Um, multi-mod for our weapons so we could craft a weapon like i showed earlier uh, i also have a video talking about this rise of the phoenix was just a good item at the beginning uh death's rush was for onslaught chaos res life ashes of the stars was our big damage boost legacy of fury was our boots for the clear and the damage boost assonance gentle touch was if i wanted to stay more in ssf and convert to like an explode setup find a usable watcher's eye was kind of just something fun i actually ended up finding a uh, flat armor determination unaffected by poison uh, watcher's eye but i would never really use it but it was usable brutal restraint is for all of the juicy rolls you can get along with the decks Aegis aurora is if i went max block setup but i didn't really want to mirror shard was kind of just a chase same with these three this was for automating my flasks i try to get this set up day one to two of leagues non-corrupted six link was for our uh, main body armor we would use all the way to 100 unless we wanted to craft like a temple base but i didn't feel like running temple um righteous fire scepter was the one for multi-mod the elder helmet was for the helmet that i had um crafting the actual elder helmet hitting 21 gems on both never ended up getting the master of fire but that would be a big boost to the clear speed uh never got these awakened gems although i did get awakened swift affliction replacing rise of the phoenix was essentially what i was talking about with getting a plus two plus three max res shield uh, never got Awakened Ink AoE, never got Empower or Enlighten. I didn't bother running Lab. I actually did get this, though. So that's nice. Um, the Unveil is basically through Betrayal. Life is ES is like your core thing on your chest piece for that bulk of Energy Shield. Plus one Gems is for damage on Helmet or Glove. 3% regen goes on any of your flasks, so you get a boost of permanent regeneration. Hybrid Chaos Res is because I like to prioritize Chaos Res. Fire Multiplier is your best suffix on Scepters, so very, very good. Uh, fire Damage and Ignite Chance is your highest source of increase. It's like 6% higher than the pure Fire Damage roll. Minimum Frenzy is a suffix on Rings for damage. Increased Damage on Rings is a prefix on Rings for damage, not a multiplier. Uh, increased Damage during Flask Effect, I think, is on Gloves. I never ended up getting this. Um, did not really do too much. I did a little bit of Heisting. But not too much. I didn't really care to do this. Uh, and then I have the progression series. And I think I just need to plug in. I don't even know if there was a day 9 and 10. Did I do a day? I think maybe I did a day 9 and 10. I forgot. But I'll plug this in. And then we'll have the conclusion kind of over here. 
overall i had a lot of fun honestly so much more fun than i thought i was going to uh, originally have and then of course with the very high highs come the very low lows i'm kind of finished with poe for this season but i had so much fun and there's nothing to be sad about right i played for two months that's so much more than i would normally play and i think things that are going to be next for us is i think on monday we're going to be checking out wilson online i think it's going to be a complete joke but you know hey some more rpg to kind of like fill in the void uh, after wilson depending on if that lasts anywhere from 15 minutes to a week um i'm gonna probably check out diablo 2 resurrected although i'm really concerned about the inventory management in that game uh and then other than that there's chronicon which had a very big update a lot of people are going to be asking about last epoch i just don't know if i'm ready to go back to last epoch it still feels really rough around the edges and that's my only big problem with it anyway that's pretty much about it i had a blast so hope you guys had a wonderful time hope you guys enjoyed yourselves if you did please feel free to like share and subscribe and don't forget, you can come back next league where you'll see some more Righteous Fire content. Hopefully some more Ascendancies. I'd like to see, you know, maybe like the Marauders kind of come back into the Righteous Fire. Um, but, you know, Inquisitor is just so damn strong right now. So we'll have to see. Anyway, see you guys all later. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day about Sundays at twitch.tv slash pox. Take care, everybody.